second video, we will introduce you to the basic operation of electric actuators. We will get into more detail in later videos, but basically electric actuators have power and control signals coming into the housing, which are connected internally to the motor and controls. The internal controls operate the motor based on the control signals received. There is internal gearing between the motor and the output shaft of the actuator. Various sensors provide feedback to the internal controls and include speed, torque, and position sensing. Feedback signals from the internal controls provide information back to the control room. While the actuator itself can be mounted directly onto a valve, if additional torque or thrust is required beyond the range of the base actuator, external gears are mounted between the actuator and the valve to increase the torque or thrust range. The actuator in the photo is a Betis XTE 3000 mounted to an external spur gear. This actuator configuration may be used to operate a large gate or penstock valve. Let's dig a little deeper into the actuator operation and talk about how specific output torque and speed are generated. We'll get into motor technology in later videos, but for now, let's take a certain AC induction motor as an example. It has a certain fixed power rating, torque, and speed based on its design and construction. We couple that actuator to internal and possible external gearing. Within that gearing, we have the possibility of a range of gear ratios. As the gear ratio increases, the final torque output increases, but at the same time, the final output speed decreases. Reflecting on our formula, since the motor has a fixed power output, if torque increases, naturally speed must decrease and vice versa. So if we need to increase the output torque to suit a particular valve, we increase the gear ratio. If we need to increase the speed of the output drive, we decrease the gear ratio. Again, these variables are inversely proportional to one another. If we need more torque and more speed, then we need to get an actuator with a larger motor. Likewise, if we have a very small valve, we may need to get an actuator with a smaller motor to not risk damage to the valve stem. So in summary, to achieve a particular output speed and torque required, to operate the valve, we change the motor within the actuator and the gearing. Just to be clear, all of these motor and gear choices are made at the factory when we size and build your actuator. The unit will be sent to you with the right configuration for your application. Electric actuators come in a range of sizes, but because multiple motor and gear combinations can be built within each actuator's size, the weight, size, and consequently the price of electric actuators vary only moderately versus torque or thrust required for the valve. This differs from a pneumatic scotch yoke actuator, which varies significantly in size as valve torque requirements increase. This is also the reason electric actuators can be more cost-effective than pneumatic actuators in large sizes. Pictured here are two examples of the same basic Betis M2CP actuator. In the left photo, the actuator is directly mounted on a six inch valve. On the right photo, the M2CP is mounted on a large slab gate valve. If you look closely, you can see the motor is larger on the right than on the left. Additionally, the M2CP on the right is mounted to an external gear to increase torque range. We hope this video was helpful in providing an introduction to the basic operation of electric actuators. Please join us on the next video to learn about how electric actuators drive multi-turn, quarter-turn, and linear valves.